This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Hello, boxing fans, and welcome to part 5 of 13, the 1930s. This is the scoring system where 23 volunteers provided me with a chronological list of between 10 and 25 names whom they believe represent the greatest pound-for-pound -pound boxers who competed in the 1930s. Let's rock. At number 10, we have Benny Lynch, who is arguably the greatest Scottish boxer of all time. Lynch was a highly skilled boxer with a good punch. Lynch would win the British and European Flyweight Championships before winning the NBA Flyweight Championship in 1935. He was stripped by the NBA and there was some subsequent dispute regarding the flyweight championship, but that matter was settled in 1937 when Lynch defeated Small Montana to solidify his claim. Quick note, the record information at the bottom is the current information on BoxRec, and is here as a point of reference. Lynch landed on 9 out of 23 in the survey, including 3 votes inside the top 5. Number 9 is Maxie Rosenblum, an American boxer known as Slapsy Maxie. As his nickname suggests, Rosenblum wasn't blessed with bone-crushing power, but he made up for his lack of power with impeccable cleverness, heart, and defensive aptitude. Slapsy Maxie won the World Light Heavyweight Championship in 1930, and he defended that title seven times until he lost it in 1934. Technically speaking, he was a two-time undisputed light heavyweight champion because he had been stripped of the NBA before winning it back and being stripped again. Slapsy Maxie appeared on 12 out of 23, including two votes inside the top five. Number eight is Panama Al Brown, a Panamanian boxer known as Kid Theophilo. Brown had a long reach and a strong punch for his size, and he was a tremendous athlete with great boxing ability. Brown won the NYSAC Bantamweight Championship in 1929, and he added the NBA a year later to earn the World Bantamweight Championship. Brown defended his championship nine times before being stripped by both the NBA and NYSAC in 1934. Brown landed on 15 out of 23, which included one vote inside the top five. Number seven is John Henry Lewis, an American boxer whose professional career began when he was just a 14-year-old competing at welterweight. Lewis won the World Light Heavyweight Championship in 1935, and he defended that crown five times over the next three years before he vacated the championship to challenge for the heavyweight title. 17 out of 23 volunteers in the survey had Lewis on their list, including one vote inside the top five. Number six is Max Schmeling, a German boxer known as the Black Yuan of the Rhine. Schmeling was a clever boxer with a sharp bludgeoning right hand. Schmeling won the World Heavyweight Championship in 1930 when he beat Jack Sharkey by disqualification, marking him as the first heavyweight to win the title by disqualification. He was stripped by the NYSAC and made one defense of the NBA before losing a controversial decision in his rematch with Sharkey. Schmeling is best known, however, for being the first man to defeat the great Joe Lewis. Schmeling received mention on 16 out of 23, including five votes inside the top five. Number five is Jimmy McLarnon, an Irish boxer known as Babyface, among at least a half a dozen other nicknames. McLarnon was a very talented boxer who consistently faced top opposition. This marks McLarnon as the eighth boxer to land inside the top ten in multiple decades, which puts him in very good company, and he was the one and only boxer who made the cut in both the 1920s and 30s. McLarnon landed on 17 out of 23, including 11 votes inside the top five. Number four is Tony Canzanari, an American boxer who is known as one of the most talented and extraordinary boxers during the early 30s. By the time the 1930s began, he was already a former featherweight world champion, and during the decade, he would win championships at both lightweight and also junior welterweight, which marked Canzanari as the second three-division champion in boxing history. 
Canzanieri finished on 21 out of 23 in the survey, including 15 votes inside the top five. Number three is Barney Ross, an American boxer who is known for his tremendous courage and durability. He won the World Lightweight and Junior Welterweight Championship in 1933, and he would win the Welterweight Championship in 1934, and he became a two-time welterweight champion in 1935, which he defended until he lost the final bout of his career in 1938. Ross was the third three-division champion in boxing history, and he finished on 22 out of 23 in the survey, which included 17 votes inside the top five. At number two, we have the Brown Bomber, the great Joe Lewis, an American boxer who is known for having an ample skill set with terrific balance and concussive knockout power. The Brown Bomber won the World Heavyweight Championship in 1937, and he went on to have the most dominant reign in heavyweight history, which extended well into the 1940s. The point total for Joe Lewis is higher than any boxer received in any of the previous decades, where Lewis was a unanimous choice with a perfect 23 of 23, and more impressive still, Lewis was a unanimous choice inside the top five, and he received nine votes for first place. And finally, at number one, we have the great Henry Armstrong, a towering legend in boxing history. Homicide Hank was an American boxer known for his whirlwind pressure style, where he could really pour it on. Not only was Armstrong yet another three-division world champion, the fourth to ever achieve the feat, amazingly, Armstrong simultaneously held the world featherweight, world lightweight, and world welterweight crowns at the same time. Armstrong had a mighty impressive showing in the survey, with a perfect 23 of 23, receiving top 5 votes on 22 of 23, and he received 14 first place votes for the decade. Here is the final top 10 list from the 1930s. Damn good list if you ask me. Several things jumped out at me here, the first of which happened when I was researching this episode. In the modern context, I know the championships were stripped prior to this, but when I think of the modern alphabet soup that started in the 80s, when the IBF came into play, that's the era I think of when that type of thing became more common. It happened before that at various points in the 60s and 70s, but I was honestly a little surprised to learn how many top boxers from the 30s had this sort of thing happen. But apparently it was starting to become a bit more common than I realized back then. And then with the number of three division champions, it's another thing that, to me, reflects back on modern boxing. Where today, we have a trend in recent years where we are seeing more and more undisputed world champions in the four belt era. Before the 1930s, only Bob Fitzsimmons had done so. And stranger yet, the situation where back then, the junior welterweight championship was actually recognized at all with a degree of esteem, which makes this division an interesting case study, because in a more traditional sense with views centered around the traditional eight, this was the first bastard division to have anyone appear inside the top ten, and in fact it had two inside the top ten. We only had one crossover here from the 1920s, Jimmy McLarnon. Previously, we had Tommy Ryan crossing over from the 1890s into the 1900s. Then we had Jack Johnson and Sam Langford crossing over from the 00s into the 1910s. And we had Tommy Gibbons, Harry Wills, Benny Leonard, and Harry Greb crossing from the 10s into the 20s. So we had 1 to 2 to 4, and now back down to 1. I guess my greater point here in mentioning all of this is to me it almost feels like a tangible point in time where a new generation of boxing was born with various new elements and trends coming into play that I think in many ways helped grow the seeds for the evolution that followed for the sport of boxing. As for some of the guys who just missed the cut, the notable ones that had over 400 points, that were within reasonable striking distance of the top 10, included Kid Chocolate, Max Bear, Lou Ambers, Young Corbett III, and Freddie Steele. 
But top to bottom, I think this is a solid list that does a great service to the 1930s with 10 outstanding boxing talents who acted as representatives for this decade. And with Henry Armstrong and Joe Lewis being separated by very little near the top, this was the closest battle to date for the top spot, where the Brown Bomber and Homicide Hank each averaged over 100 points per participant. Previously, only four others have done it in the survey. Bob Fitzsimmons and Tommy Ryan from the 1890s, Joe Gans from the 1900s, and Harry Greb from the 1920s. The fact that Armstrong and Lewis are in an exclusive group here with six members to date is something I find damn interesting. A very special thanks to the 23 volunteers who contributed to the 1930s edition of this boxing survey experiment. I really appreciate your time and commitment. You all rock. Thank you very much. For those who want to participate in the remaining decades from the series, I provided a link in the description, and all official submissions must be made in that thread over at BoxingForum24.com. So what do you think of the top 10 list from the 1930s? Please share your views in the comments section. Thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.